What's up guys, the one and only here and today we're going to take a look at one of Apple's most popular accessories that is essential to any Mac setup. In this video, we're going to take a look at a quick unboxing as well as a deep dive of Apple's newest Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and the numeric pad. Now this was released about a year ago, but a lot of consumers want to know what the difference is between this and the prior gen. Apple doesn't call this the Magic Keyboard 3 per se, but that is essentially what this is, only with a few minor tweaks and refinements. If you've ever typed on any M1 MacBook, then you'll be happy to know that this keyboard features the exact same set of style keys millions of Mac users have grown to love. The changes here are very subtle, but as its name suggests, the biggest refinement is the implementation of Touch ID embedded directly into the keyboard, similar to how all M1 MacBooks feature a Touch ID sensor to unlock your machine as well as make purchases online using Apple Pay. Apple's accessories are infamous for taking the Apple tax to a whole new level. So if you had to guess, how much do you think this keyboard retails for? $50? $100? $150? Well, stay tuned as we'll answer that question plus much more. But before we begin, I know there are hundreds if not thousands of options to consider in terms of keyboards. But if you're interested in checking this keyboard out for yourself, they'll be linked in the video description down below. All right, this is going to be a quick one as this is more or less a pretty straightforward product. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into an unboxing. All right, ladies and gents, so real quick, let's take a look at our packaging. In typical Apple fashion, we got our rather long and elongated box that features an image of our all new Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, and this version is longer because it also features a numeric pad. However, there is a version without the numeric pad with Touch ID as well, but I'll cover pricing and availability in just a bit. Our packaging is very simple here with just two Apple logos on the side, and on the back it's pretty bare bone with Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and numeric keypad branding, as well as an indication of where our Touch ID sensor is located, alongside some serial number information towards the bottom right. We don't feature any kind of pull tab to remove the plastic wrapping, so grab an unboxing knife or pair of scissors nearby, remove the plastic, and then we have a convenient pull tab that allows you to slide the keyboard out. First thing we're greeted with is the Magic Keyboard in the classic silver with white keys shrouded in this frosted plastic to protect it during shipment. But we'll set that off to the side for now while we dig deeper into the contents of our box. We do find something pretty neat in the form of this color matched braided USB-C to lightning cable that is needed to recharge the device and also pair it up to your Mac if you choose to pair it up manually, but you can also simply pair it up using Bluetooth without the cable. Then we have our typical quick start guide as well as some regulatory and warranty information. But now heading back to our shiny new keyboard, simply remove the frosted plastic and there she is probably the cleanest this keyboard will ever be, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so now going over pricing because things get a little, uh, weird, depending on what color option or size you choose. This one here, in silver with white keys with numeric pad and touch ID, will set you back an eye-watering $179. But wait, if you thought that was bad, for some reason, the space gray version with black keys is $20 more expensive, coming in at $199. Why the black one is more expensive is beyond me. There's nothing special about it other than the different color. So if anybody knows exactly why it's pricier, do let us know in the comments section below. However, if you have no need for the longer version with numeric pad, there is the more condensed and smaller version which also does feature Touch ID, and that model comes in at $149, but oddly is not featured in a space gray version with black keys. Very strange, I must admit, but it solely comes down to your preferences. Gamers, video editors, and individuals using the Magic Keyboard for business could utilize the numeric keypad to their advantage, but if you have no use for it and want to save some money, the smaller version without the numeric pad is literally the exact same keyboard with absolutely no other differences other than it literally having the writermost third portion essentially chopped off with some keys missing, and the only other difference that is noteworthy is that your directional arrow keys are regular sized, seeing as how they have a dedicated space for them on the version with the numeric pad. Apple still currently sells the second gen Magic Keyboards without the Touch ID sensor for $99 for the standard one and $129 for the version with numeric pad. Seems kind of steep to pay so much more for just a Touch ID sensor, huh? So then what's new? 
Thankfully, I have the Magic Keyboard with numeric keypad second gen right here in space gray to compare and contrast. Obviously, one of the major changes is that you now have a dedicated Touch ID sensor that allows you to unlock any M1 equipped Mac the same way you would with an M1 equipped MacBook. The Touch ID button also doubles as a lock switch for whenever you want to quickly and easily lock your computer. Outside of this, there are only a few other minor tweaks to the design that differentiates it from the prior legacy Magic Keyboard. First off, you got these much more rounded edges to match up with Apple's more modern aesthetic and design language. And then some buttons, most of them being function keys, have some new controls. Where the F4 launchpad button used to be on the prior gen now got replaced with a spotlight search button. Additionally, on the prior gen, the F5 and F6 keys were actually blank, essentially being dummy keys to make everything look aesthetically pleasing, which sure I can understand, but why? Well anyway, on the new version, the F5 and F6 keys now serve a purpose, thankfully with the F5 function key now serving as a microphone button that fires up voice dictation but can also be customized to summon Siri. It's not something I typically will ever use on my Mac, but hey, it's there. And then the F6 key is now a shortcut for do not disturb, essential for those instances where you want your contacts to know you're busy when in reality you're on your bed eating some chips watching YouTube with your cat by your side. Very convenient in my opinion. And finally we have a welcome addition to the FN key on the version with the numeric pad which again before on the prior gen was pretty much useless but now it can bring up the emoji keyboard which is hella useful. Before, unless you went and googled or did some research on how to bring up the emoji keyboard, most people would probably never be able to guess it, but like I said, before you had to press command plus control plus the space bar. Kind of an awkward combination to summon the emoji keyboard and not all that straightforward whatsoever. Now though, you have to press one simple button and you can go ahead and send all the mad face emojis to your siblings, partner, or friends, which is always a plus and a welcome addition to the Magic Keyboard. Apart from that though, those are basically all the differences between this and the previous gen. You still got a very familiar footprint with that classic wedge shaped design. You got the super bouncy scissor style keys with one millimeter of travel, which makes your fingers bounce from key to key and makes typing a very enjoyable experience. You still have your on off switch in the same location situated at the top right of the keyboard and your color matched plastic window here so that the Bluetooth signal can pass through easier through the chassis of the keyboard and features the same ultra long battery as before. With the full charge, the keyboard can easily last you several months without ever needing a charge. In truth, the Touch ID sensor is the main reason some Mac users will want to pick this up and it works flawlessly and just as intended. Like I mentioned, first you need to pair the keyboard which can be done in one of two ways. Either hook up a lightning cable from your Mac directly onto the lightning port found on the keyboard or flip the switch to green, head over to your Bluetooth menu and pair it up via Bluetooth. Once you do that, you'll see a prompt to set up Touch ID. If you don't see this pop-up, it's likely you'll need to upgrade your software in order to commence the Touch ID setup process. Important thing to note though, at this time, Touch ID compatibility is solely reserved for M1 Macs. So any Intel Mac, Mac Pro, or Intel iMac will not be able to take advantage of the new hardware. And for those wondering, it also excludes M1 iPad Pros. So while you can pair the keyboard up with an M1 iPad Pro, you simply won't be able to lock or unlock your iPad Pro using the Touch ID sensor. It is possible to pair this keyboard to an M1 MacBook, but it seems kind of redundant seeing as how MacBooks already have a keyboard installed. Seeing as, well, they're laptops. So please, please, please do not buy this keyboard if you do not have an M1 equipped Mac unless you just want Apple stock to appreciate in value. The Touch ID sensor does prove useful and is the new standard for Apple's growing line of products, moving away from typing your password in manually, which does shave off precious seconds that over the long run really do add up and best yet, you can customize your settings to your desired Touch ID functionality. So you can set it to unlock your Mac, use it for Apple Pay on the iTunes Store, App Store, or Apple Books, as well as using it for password autofill. And like I said, the Touch ID sensor doubles as a lock key, so a full press will lock your Mac and you only have to rest your finger over the sensor to unlock your machine. 
So that's been it guys. I know it's a pricey keyboard, but it's a wireless keyboard that is extremely durable, easy to use, has amazing key travel, and is of course made by Apple. If you want to rock an all Apple setup, this is definitely the way to go. I know there are plenty of options out there to choose from, but it's been my favorite for several years now and I fully recommend it for anyone looking for a reliable keyboard that comes with an enjoyable typing experience as well as some cool new features. My biggest complaint with the keyboard is the absence of a backlight, which would have been useful for the countless scenarios where you're in a dark room, typing up an essay, a word document, a presentation, or simply replying to friends and family on your favorite social media site. But definitely let me know what you guys think. Do you like Apple's first party keyboards when utilizing a Mac or do you prefer other options? The changes here are minimal so I wouldn't necessarily recommend anyone upgrade if you have the prior second gen model. But if you have the money for it and absolutely need the Touch ID sensor plus additional function keys, then I say go for it, you won't be disappointed. That's been it for me guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.